Do you remember when Seinfeld had the fake pilot and they had the fake Kramer? And there wasn't really much that was redeeming about this whole departure from the plot or change in the plot, except for when he confronted George the last time. The raisins, well, he took the raisins. How would you feel if I just put my hand through your chest and ripped your heart right out? And of course, I don't know if it's verbatim, so don't go back and tell Andy that. He, he misquoted the Seinfeld episode, but it was at that moment where you knew where George stood. Not just physically, but where he stood. But it took the back and forth, the dancing around with the raisins a couple of times over. It's about to happen. First round of the NBA playoffs. All of this leading up to it, the final week or so, this last stretch of two weeks, technically, of regular season basketball, where you're going to be sold all the time. Well, this is important. This is important. No, it's not. Seeding is ugh, from the wire. It's not as important as it as it's being built. With that said, there is a lot of opportunity for our leans, locks, and likes. We don't really have many likes anymore. We've kind of said goodbye to that. Welcome in. Thumbs up. Subscribe. A couple of teams are going to find themselves staring up like George Costanza to the Raisins guy. And it's going to start in Charlotte. Look, why all of a sudden are the Dallas Mavericks getting this major benefit of the doubt here? I, I don't see it. The only guy that we're really worried about as far as an injury standpoint is Tim Hardaway Jr. But this team has been bad all along with the arrival of Kyrie. It's been brutal. So what are we looking at here? And that's what I'm kind of lost on is nine and a half points is gigantic. And I'm fading Dallas more than I'm going to pump up Charlotte and give you anything massive about that. When I look at this first game and it starts early and Dallas is on the road and they're trying to figure out what the hell has gone wrong, which a lot has gone wrong. Let's be fair here for a team right now that is looking on the outside in of the playoffs. I don't think they lose, but I think that's highly possible. Yeah, I'm going to take the nine and a half points. This is an early game, all right? Hornets, nine and a half points, lock it up. Unbelievable that this spread would be this wide. I don't care who's down for Charlotte. It doesn't matter to me. Again, they could be five backups. Things are so tight. And you're not going to have Oubre. I get that, Rogier. Whatever you're looking at, it's fine. It's fine. Although it does look like Oubre is trending, which is great. This is nine and a half, way too much. And that's where we open up with a lock. I can't promise you that there are going to be much more. I'm sure we'll get to one more, but let's keep it moving here. Bulls and the Lakers. The Lakers are a fascinating case study in what could happen in the NBA playoffs, right? Like the Lakers are still hovering at that eight seed, could still be at that eight seed with the whole play-in scenario. And you look at finishing eighth, getting healthy, healthy, what that could do with the possible Denver who is just prime, and you know it, and that's not the Philly in me, but you know it, they're prime to be upset. Lakers, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Anthony Davis just lighting it up. They've won three straight. They're at home here, and... Yeah, I'm looking at the game with Chicago, and and the bigger element of, of the Bulls, I think, is going to be negated, and you can take that literal, of course, with Vooch. There's just going to be so much opportunity, I think, for specifically Anthony Davis, and I'm going to go over Anthony Davis's points. It's not up physically quite yet, so I'm leaning this way. Books put that up. That'd be great. But again, <laughs> over Anthony Davis points to me makes the most sense. Even if the Lakers are losing, even if the Lakers are down in a tight game, they need to come back or they're just hanging in a tight game. He's not going to be taken out 
of the game. Rebounds, that's fine. I just, I'd like to see what the number is. I I'm going to guess that points, rebounds, let's do it that way. All right. All right. Let's just do this over points, rebounds, and assists. All right. Easy. Anthony Davis. That's a lean. I need to see the number for lock anything up. But I love where we are here with the Lakers momentum and the matchup specifically for AD against Chicago. And it's not, you know, I'm not disparaging Chicago like I would Dallas. I'm just saying, nah, there's not really much for Anthony Davis that I'd be concerned about. Again, the game, it can go many a ways. But with Anthony Davis, I think we're in good shape. We move on. Nets on the road. Yeah, it's it's just, it has been at least. A lot of down, way more down than up for the Brooklyn Nets. Let's be fair. And I think you look at this team and you have to really expect consistent change. You win one game. You stop a skid, you win one game. You got to show me a little more the nature of this skid. You continue to skid, then you further compound how much you need to win in order for us to be like, okay, now they're out of it. They'd have to win three straight or so for me to be confident in the Brooklyn Nets. And the game itself holds where you're taking on Orlando and, and the record may not be fantastic at home ATS as a home favorite. But in this case, the difference is Orlando is still involved. That is key. We're not talking about Charlotte, who is, is able to take advantage of another team's misery like the Dallas Mavericks right now. It's different to just show up and get run out of the building. But hold on a second. We can further spoil a story in the NBA. There's some motivation there. Everybody wants a shot at Luka. Kyrie's involved in this. Orlando has life still. Orlando hasn't been eliminated. They've won two straight. This game is going to be tight. I think the spread is pretty accurate as far as what we can see. What I do like, though, is going under in the first half. Under first half total, I think, is, for me, the best way to attack this game. The total sitting at 225, it's not the end of the world if you wanted to take that. I would lean, however to the first half total. I think that's where things are going to slow down. You're going to see more starter action. Even the bench with the Magic able to sustain and, and hold on to a lead. I don't think you're going to see a run from the Brooklyn Nets. It's going to be a lower scoring first half overall. So that's where I'd lean. Cavs at home are a tough one. But for that, let me tell you about what's going on here at Bet365. I should, right? I should. This is going to be easy cakes. Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia. What is wrong? Why wouldn't you take advantage of this? What the freak? 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Do you understand what's happening? Take 60 seconds out of your life. You sign up below. You click up. You deposit $10 and bet a dollar. It turns into $365. Are you kidding me? I think you have to jump on this. Absolutely jump on this. This is where you're going to see a major opportunity that's probably not going to last. And that's why we want to give it to you. Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, Illinois. I, I, I don't know why you would. No idea why you would. Still got the Raisins guy, by the way. Love him. The fake Kramer. Not the fake Peterman. Fake Kramer. Big difference. Rockets, Cavs in Cleveland. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to go over the first half here, and I'll explain why. This isn't uh, rocket science. As you know, following my stuff, not much of what I do is. But this game, you've got tempo with the Rockets. They score. We just talked about this on the Discord, about going over a first quarter play. Love the idea here. Same scenario where we're pushing tempo. Cleveland scores. As great as they are defensively, they score. When you're going up against a team with this wide of a gap, 13 and a half points on the spread, you're going to allow them to get up and down. You're okay with a faster game. It's okay if you surrender a bucket or two because you know that you're a bucket every time you go down the floor. It's not like, all right, we better limit this shit because they've got Giannis or who Embiid, what have you, and we may not get another bucket. You're going to get buckets against Houston. 
I like the tempo here. I like going over the first half total. It is a lean. I understand that. But for me, looking at the game total, things could easily slow down. Could be a blowout in the second half. Houston just dies at like 88 points. I don't want any part of that shit. I'm going to jump in on the first half. That's my lean here for the game in Cleveland, sorry, with the Rockets and Cavs. We move on. Just saw the Atlanta Hawks burst through my under from Saturday's plays. Shameful as that was. Mm. Here come the Grizzlies. Short, short favorites. Trey Young was awful. Just brutal. I think in this case, there might be an opportunity for that to continue and a bet, a player prop that we can jump on. Uh, you're not going to see it quite yet, but just from the game itself, I'm going to lay two with the Grizzlies. I don't like where Atlanta is right now. They This game on Saturday, it went over, but my goodness, I mean, Indiana is, is thoroughly cooked, thoroughly cooked. They gave up a lot of points. And that's what it needed to have happen for Atlanta. The circumstances needed to play out. They're not winning 100 to 98 or 97 in that type of scenario. A lot of points means they can outscore. Same thing I just laid out with the Rockets. In this case, Memphis is going to defend. Memphis is going to take possessions and buckets away. Who am I to buck anybody like that in the face here? I'll turn that around and lean to with the favorite, the Memphis Grizzlies on the road and, and not really blink much when it comes to it because I think the better play here is just taking the better team. And that's fine with me, by all means. We move to Boston, 16 and a half point favorites. What do you do? Seriously, what do you do? I mean, I, I think the problem with the first half spread is... It's going to be close to eight and a half, right? I mean, you start to look at this first half spread. It's ignorant what is going to be asked of you to cover because it's nearly a 17 point spread as a whole. So where can you get some avenue of attack? You can't play early, at least dudes in a blowout scenario. You're not going to be able to play the ninth man on the Boston Celtics. What you could do, though, is look at how, what, like, what happens? How much time could you imagine you need for a guy on the Spurs to hit something? Zach Collins going over seven and a half rebounds. That's not a major ask in a, I get it, limited amount of time. But there's also an expectation that... The Spurs are in this game in one of the first two quarters. You're banking on two of three of four quarters, part of me, for Zach Collins being really active on the glass. I don't know if I love it. PRA? All right. Now we're on to something. Under 24 and a half. This is where it gets fun. Under 24 and a half, Zach Collins PRA. Lock it up. Lock it up. The reason is because we just looked at how much time he truly has in this game via rotation, blowout potential, stuff along those lines. It's going to be hard, unless he lights it up in one category, it's going to be hard for him to be on the floor with enough volume to do that, just that. He'd have to have the game of his week slash month, probably slash quasi two months, whatever it is, whatever the coin term is. Yeah, lock it up. Under 24 and a half PRA, Zach Collins. It's not going to be out there long enough. It's not going to be enough time. And yes, you can health, you can make a healthy wager. <laughs> I'm about to say something that doesn't exist on Zach Collins. Move on. You don't have to worry about the result of this game, the first half, anything like that. You're good. Three more to go. Wizards Raptors. Toronto at home is a bucket. We know that. Toronto has established a pretty strong home court. It's what's going to provide a lot of electricity. 
anybody that, I mean, they've got a better home court advantage than the Knicks because the Knicks just went through that brutal stretch where they weren't doing anything at home. And everybody else above them, right? But you know, there's really just five teams in the East that do better at home consistently. So it doesn't automatically mean that you lay six points blind on the spread. It means you try to figure out where Toronto has been able to succeed specifically at home. It would help to look at, at a glance, of course, what's happening with the Washington Wizards and their desperation right now. But Toronto, you know, Toronto was also hanging. And Toronto's on the other side of where Washington is. So this is a battle. Expect one. Expect teams to come out motivated. That's a lot of start. Maybe a little extra minute or two for your starters in the rotation. You hang a guy out there a little longer, uh, assuming that there's no foul trouble or anything along those lines. You'll start to see that a little bit if there is a game or two close to the end that truly does matter. Not all of them do, I know. But I think we can go under the first half total here, and that's exactly what I'd like to do. Mainly, as I mentioned, because both of these teams are so close, they both need it and expect that they're going to get it. And I do. That that usually transfers into more starter minutes, which usually transfers into a lower scoring game. As we saw just with the you know Atlanta going a little deeper, Pacers opposite of what I laid out yesterday. So don't listen to what I said yesterday. In this case, it's a lean, but we'll go under first half of the Raptors. All right? Now, this game coming up, I think you're just going to have to expect that the Thunder are going to be taking or uh, laying some points. And Portland is just holding on to whatever scraps are left if I were to grow my hair out. Not much. It wouldn't look good. This is important for Oklahoma City. Every game moving forward is. And in the last 10 games or so for OKC, you can do enough to distance yourself and, and catch teams like even Minnesota, for that matter. I mean, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility higher than that, but I'll, I'll keep it for the purposes of this video a little tighter. I love the Thunder here. I just don't want to... I'm not going to take them on the money line. I'm going to expect that their record, that where they are, it's not going to be a heavy lay by any means. So I'm willing to just lay the points with the Thunder on the spread. This is a team that's just better right now overall than Portland. And it's not one that I want to mess with. You know, looking at any expected injuries or things along those lines, you don't have to worry about Oklahoma City as we imagine. And Portland is exactly what we know they've been. A team that's barely been able to win three of their last 10 games. And they don't have a pulse much longer. If it weren't for Dallas, really, they'd probably be eliminated or close to it. Maybe not eliminated. I shouldn't say that, but close to it. Like much, much closer back, like actually touching the wall. Maybe not on it, but like that little, little minuscule of space. Last one for that, come on over to the Discord. Another beautiful, beautiful night. We want you to be a part of it. We're printing over there. It's all of us. Lindy's over there. Raza's over there. Isaiah's over there. I'm over there. We'll give you half off your first week. The link is below. Promo code is ESINSIDER. Half off your first week. Again, ESINSIDER. Half off your first week. Last game on the slate. All right, then you can go home and say, thank goodness this guy. I thought he wouldn't shut up. I understand. I understand. Last one, the Warriors at home are, I think, are returning to that team. And we have to start respecting what Golden State is right now, assuming, of course, that we get no load management, etc. But Minnesota is going to be a healthy out, meaning you're not, I don't think you're going to see blowout. I, I think you're going to see a closer game here. I think. That's going to ultimately benefit Golden State. They can pull away closer to the end of the game. I'm not going to play with the total here, but Minnesota on the road, I, I cannot trust them right now. I'd love to. I truly would. And on the surface, I mean, we are under seven, but I'm going to leave you with the final thought, which is 
this is where we anybody who expects Golden State to slowly start that incline round now is where we expect it to start. And I think you're going to see evidence of that on Sunday. Give me the Warriors minus six. A little lean, but I'll take it. All right. Thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate you big time. Lindy's got you Monday through Friday. I've got you Saturday, Sunday. It's the leans, the locks. Take advantage of Bet365. Come on over to the Discord, and we'll see you tomorrow.